Israel's army chief, Hatsi Halevi, has pledged to respond to Iran's reprisal attack at the weekend. The government's war cabinet met on Monday again. There's been no announcement of any definite action, but Halevi says Iran will face consequences. We are closely assessing the situation. We remain at our highest level of readiness. Iran will face the consequences for its actions. We will choose our response accordingly. The IDF remains ready to counter any threat from Iran and its terror proxies as we continue our mission to defend the State of Israel. According to media reports, commanders are seeking a response that will hurt Iran without triggering a wider war. There are international calls for restraint. Here's a look at some of the options. A long shadow war that has come out into the open with Iran's attack on Israel over the weekend. Israel's government faces pressure from within the country to strike back at Tehran forcefully to maintain deterrence. The highest risk and most drastic step Israel could take would be to strike at Iran's nuclear program. That could quickly lead to a major escalation of the conflict. Israel is suspected to have attacked Iran's uranium enrichment facilities before, including in 2010 with a computer virus program that set Iran's nuclear program back years, but never officially acknowledged it. A step down in intensity would be airstrikes on Iran's oil facilities, military airports or other military facilities. Attacking oil targets might significantly rattle the world economy, and attacks on Iran's military could force Tehran to feel like it had to respond again, tit-for-tat attacks that could lead to a regional war. In both cases, there are military and technical issues. Israel's stock of long-range ballistic missiles is low, and fighter jets would face a long and complicated journey to their targets, raising the risk to Israel even further. A third option is no official public reaction, but to instead take the shadow war back into the shadows. Israel is suspected to have assassinated multiple Iranian officials and nuclear researchers over the past decade. It also regularly strikes at Iranian proxies in Syria and Lebanon, pushing retaliation into this gray area without attacking Iranian soil would likely allow Israel to avoid the escalation its allies, like the U.S., have been trying hard to contain. Yossi Mechelberg is an associate fellow of the Middle East and North Africa program at Chatham House, a British-based think tank. I asked him if this is going to be the start of a tit-for-tat escalation. Good morning. Hopefully not. But uh, yes, the, uh, Israel committed itself to, to respond the way that Iran committed itself to respond uh, to Israeli attack in, in, in Damascus. And there, there is the fear of, uh, very, of a slippery slope of, of tit-for-tat. But we need to pay attention to the wording. The wording doesn't say that it has to be immediately. It doesn't seem that, you know, the, the scope of it. So there it leaves enough room for diplomatic effort, at least for now, but Israel allies to reassure Israel of its deterrent without the need to retaliate, and at least not to retaliate in a way that will uh, drag the, the, the Middle East into, into a regional war. This is the real danger. But, you know, there, there is, as every country in a situation of, of war, there is a bank of, of, of targets with the assessment of what might lead to, to a low intensity response and what to, to a much more major response. And this is a calculation that the Israeli government needs to, to take into account. But okay. actually, it's in a much better strategic situation today than it was three days ago. You can definitely say that. Uh, but you are still talking about the dangers of a regional war. Still, the US, one of uh, Israel's biggest supporters and uh, one of the biggest players in supporting uh, Israel during this attack from Iran, uh, which was supposedly in response to an alleged Israeli attack on that uh, Iranian consulate in Syria. Um, what happens next? Because it, the US is saying that it won't join in any retaliation attack now from Israel on Iran. 
which opens up Israel to, to a range of danger and threat. I think the coordination on Saturday, Sunday uh, and night showed that the United States, as is the UK and, and, well, and, and, and uh, France as well, not to mention some, some Sunni countries in, in, in the Middle East, were behind Israel in trying to support uh, to support it in defending its its border, but this is not guaranteed. If Israel is retaliating in a, in a way that endangers them, one of the reasons that they supported Israel and, and participated in this operation on protecting in, in protecting Israel because this was attack on Israel and hurting Israel badly goes against their interest. But retaliation on Israel and then starting this kind of tit for tat might endanger them, and they are not interested. So again, this is something that Israel should should calculate. Sometimes showing restraint, actually taking their time, because a Iran didn't manage to to cause great damage. B it actually re it united the front against it, so mm -hmm. Israel can actually take the time and reconsider its next move. But what has happened now to deterrence? Um, Israel's Prime Minister was harshly criticised by the opposition leader yesterday who said Netanyahu's government was responsible for leading to total loss of Israeli deterrence in the wake of this unprecedented Iranian attack. Well, the, the, very, the, the very fact that Iran dared to launch such an attack shows that deterrence was damaged. But there's a, a lot had to do with the way that Benjamin Netanyahu and his irresponsible government is governing Israel for nearly a year and a half now. It's, it creates friction within the country. It damaged the unity within not only the conscript, but within the military, the reservists, many of them that refuse, that refuse to volunteer at least until October 7 in a country that goes on the path of dictatorship and instead of, of democracy. So when uh, Mr. Lapid talks about this, he actually as much talks about internal affairs within, within Israel, uh, the inability to stop Hamas on October 7, and the way that Israel, A, conducts the war in, in Gaza, and uh, alienating many of its, uh, of, of, of its uh, friends and allies across the world. Yossi Bechelberg, thank you very much for joining us. Great to get your insights. Thank you. DW correspondent Ami Anisif is following events in Jerusalem. We saw some of the options there. Another, of course, is de-escalation. Any signs of that? Well, is Israel's war cabinet uh, ended its uh, meeting yesterday, Monday, saying that they were going to plan a forceful counterattack, uh, but one that was designed not uh, to spark a regional war. Uh, we've also heard Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, say that uh, any counterattack would be calculated and would not come from the gut. So it would not be an emotional attack, it would be a very calculated attack. And all of this language is designed to reassure partners and uh, people within Israel that uh, there war will not be a wider war, that this will de-escalate. The problem here is that partners such as the U.S. and also other international actors such as the U.N. and China are urging Israel not to respond at all. That's because, don't forget, uh, the Iranian attack was a response to an alleged Israeli attack on an embassy complex in Damascus that belonged to Iran. Uh, so Iran's uh, attack over the weekend was seen as an attempt uh, to put the matter to rest, at mm -hmm. least by Iran, and the U.S. seems to be convinced of this as well. So uh, what Israel's version of de-escalation is may not be Iran's, and that could spark a regional war anyway. I mean, what about the timing of a response? Well, the war cabinet is set to meet again today, Tuesday, so that signals that there is not going to be an immediate response. Uh, also, the home front rules, which are the restrictions on public gatherings and things like this, which came right before uh, Iran's attack, have not been put in place. The, they're, they've been lifted. Uh, so that also signals that we won't see anything in the uh, next day or so, uh, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see about that. What pressure is the prime minister facing to order a counterattack? Well, he's facing serious pressure from within his government. That's because he's made a coalition with far-right groups, uh, and 
who have urged an immediate attack on Iran, uh, one that would go crazy. Uh, basically, um, there are elements within his government who are seeking a regional war. They want to attack Iran and knock out its nuclear capabilities before it has a nuclear weapon that could strike Iran and want to take advantage of this moment. But it's the Israeli war cabinet that's going to make a decision about this counterattack, and uh, that contains centrists um, like uh, 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 Benny Gantz, who is not from uh, Netanyahu's party and uh, may be urging Netanyahu to show more restraint than he would otherwise. I mean, it's following developments for us from Jerusalem.